Salute family, it's Tank Commander Zulu and the Real Man Movement. You are now watching TV Savalas. To learn more about Tank Commander Zulu and the Real Man Movement, join me on YouTube at Tank Commander Zulu. And also follow me on IG at tank.commander.zulu on Instagram. It's all about positive male enforcement. Fire in the hole, baby. Rock steady. Hey, so I wanted to share this with y'all about the time, especially my people who are in the music industry or trying to be a part of the music industry or make music or whatever the case may be as far as music goes. Um, this is my experience, real life, what happened to me as far as my first record label. Um, me signing, which I thought I signed or I thought I was a part of something. So that it really was uh, smoke and mirrors basically. When I look back at it now, me being 31 years old now, compared to back then when I was uh, 19, 20. Um, <clears throat> so this is what happened, y'all. Um, those of you who may not know, I used to do gospel rap. And so this is like, let's just say uh, 2006 to 2000, um, 10, right? Let's call it that. 2006, 2006 to 2010. And so, <clears throat> early on in, in those years, uh, let's just say around 2000 and, let's call it 2007. Uh, my dad was uh, passed away. I was living with my uncle and auntie. <clears throat> and, um, and so out here in the Bay Area, um, well, first I gotta give you a little, I gotta give you the backstory a little bit. So my dad passed away. I moved to Sacramento with my oldest, bro with my oldest brother on my mom's side, and I did my first event, my first concert, uh, because of my sister-in-law. She signed me and my niece up to perform at this uh, like event, <clears throat> and up until that point, I had never performed. This is 2007. Right after my uh, father passed away. So, um, I had a song called Warrior for Christ. And I'm not going to get into the details of like the song or nothing or how it came about. That's a whole different video. But anyway, <clears throat> um, I did my first event in SAC. Um, and then, I ended up taking a job back closer to the Bay Area in Martinez. And so, I left um, from Sacramento and moved back closer to the Bay. And so, by virtue of that of that happening, um, <clears throat> I was under the belief or the cycle that I was the only like gospel rapper that was around. And then my uncle, who was a, a minister at the time, he was a, um, a elder, but he put me on to some people, um, some gospel rap people. Um, when I first got saved back in the days, so. See if it's like so. I was listening to their CDs. <laughs> it's like uh, it's my man from Richmond. Oh man, I can't even remember their name right now. Oh, uh, 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 Larry Austin. That's what it was. Minister Larry Austin. Larry Austin. He went hard. I had him, and then I had a bunch of other uh, CDs too. But I I had those CDs of those uh, rappers that was like from Richmond and all this. Or from the Bay, but I didn't like know them. I never seen them, anything to that nature. So anyway, um, I, I I was under the assumption that I was the only young gospel rapper in the Bay, which I was very mistakenly wrong. So anyway, my homeboy D, um, shout out to D, or uh, so anyway, <coughs> he was like his cousin does does gospel rap, and I was like, okay, that's what's up. But his cousin was older as well you know me and d about the same age he got me by like two years i think but anyway so d was like my cousin got an event he invited me to in richmond i was like oh, that's what's up he said you want to go because d knew that i was doing a gospel rap thing now me and d had did songs together but it was it was more secular music it was more street gangster type music or you know what i'm saying worldly music and so i started doing my because me and d always recorded together at his house and so D's cousin was trying to, I guess, convert, you know, D as well. 
um, into Christianity more so, I believe. But anyway, that's a different story. <clears throat> so me and D go out to Richmond to this event. And then, um, man, it was crazy. Went to this church and it was so many great, lyrical, and entertaining gospel rappers who was all young for the most part. I mean, I had some older cats there, but the young was the one who caught my attention. And, um, and <coughs> I don't even remember seeing these cousin there at this event, but, um, me and, me and D rolled back, you know, to uh, Pittsburgh. We were slapping one of the uh, mixtapes that we had got from there, from the event. And so, uh, fast forward the story. D's cousin had a record had a, a record label um, called God Given Records. And as time went on, so I'm skipping a whole bunch of stuff, but as time went on, I became more affiliated with the gospel rap community in the Bay. And I started meeting people and, and hanging out and doing these type of things with these uh, individuals. So, Dee's cousin had an album. <coughs> had did an album. And so, <coughs> he had an event at his church, which I was invited to, and I ended up going. It's a good event, everything was beautiful. And then me and Dee's cousin started uh, talking, you know, ministry, music, all that type of stuff. He introduced me like, yo, this is this is my boy Savalas, uh, whatever, whatever, S-Dub. Um, and so <coughs> me and Dee's cousin, so from now on I'm going to call Dee's cousin um, the boss, right? So the boss, me and the boss started linking up. <coughs> And um, we we became like a, a friendship, basically. Like I said, he was an older cat. He had a you know, he got a family, all the stuff. So here I am, I don't know, 19, 20 years old. Um, and my the only thing that I ever wanted to do in life, as far as music, was to have a CD, have my own CD in stores, like an actual CD in stores. If any of my people out there can relate. To, to that, you know, leave a comment below. Like, if you just wanted your music in store so people can buy or sell, I mean, because people can buy it. That's all I ever wanted. Like, you know what I mean? Being a fan of, you know, hip hop and all this, and then changing my life for what I thought, you know, for the better as far as uh, spiritual, and then trying to push the spiritual music. And I was like, man, I want to get this, um, I want to get an album in stores. And so, the boss had this record label like I said and me and him we got this friendship and you know he had his album actually in the stores in the Christian stores the Christian bookstores I was like man that's so tight you know what I'm saying like and and so uh, you know me being 19 20 years old totally not familiar with the business side of music um, at all, only thing that I knew was that I was supposed to get some copyrights either through ASCAP or BMI, and the only reason I knew that was because my oldest brother, who I was living with in SAC, was trying to start a record label years prior to this, and I was supposed to be on the label, but things didn't work out. So my brother sat me down one night, back in the days, this when I was like uh, 15, 16, and he was like, you gotta get your music copyrighted, and back then, it wasn't like it is now where everything's digital, Back then, it was paperwork you had to fill out. And so he was showing me he had all the paperwork. Boom, 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 boom. He was like, yeah, you just write this, da, 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 and then submit it. So anyway, that's the only thing that I knew once I met the boss about the music industry. Or what I, you know what I mean? That's the only thing that I knew. So, um, me and this dude, uh, good, good individual, so, <coughs> um, we was, uh, now here's another thing too. So, you know, like I told you, my boy D is his cousin, is his little cousin. And also what I didn't know was one of the dudes from my church actually knew the boss, one of the deacons. And um, the boss was like, yo, 
I'm gonna be going to your church to do some uh, painting. He said, Deacon such and such hit me up about doing. I said, you know him? He was like, yeah. And I was like, swear, to, I was like, swear, I didn't know y'all knew each other. But that's a whole different story. So anyway, me and the boss, he, he the boss invited me to help him, or he asked me to help him paint the church. He was gonna put some money in my pocket. Just as a gesture to a, 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 a fellow brother, you know what I mean? I was like, cool, I'll do that. And so I went with him, we helped paint the back of the church. And then the deacon was like, oh, I didn't know you knew the boss. I was like, yeah, man, you do, you do the gospel rap thing. He said, he said oh, okay, I see, see y'all linking up now. I was like, yeah. So some during that kind of time period when me and him was real kicking it real close, <coughs> he was like, the boss I'm talking about, the boss was like, um, how would you feel about, he was talking to me, you know, asking me about life, uh, my vision, my goals. He was asking me just a little, when I think about it now, he was basically interviewing me. And so, you know, I was explaining to him how I feel about life and ministry and music and all the stuff. And I was sharing with him some old music me and his cousin did uh, from, you know, back in the days. <coughs> and so, he was basically like, yo, how would you feel? He said, would you be open to uh, being a part of God Giving Records? And I was like, man, I would love to be a part of God Giving Records. You feel me? Like... Man, put me on. You know what I mean? I want to be on the team. You know what I'm saying? I want to. I want to represent. At this point in time, I had already did a few shows. Um, he already heard all my music, for the most part, and like we was vibing. We was vibing, um, not just as like homeboys, but as like spiritual brothers. Um, and it was a good. I thought it was. Well, it was a good thing. I'm not gonna sit here and say it wasn't. It was a good thing. So, what ended up happening was, so now I'm like, man, I'm a part of God giving records. This dude actually been to the hip hop, the Holy Hip Hop Awards in Atlanta, and all the stuff, right? With his music, he got invited, and all the stuff. So I'm like, man, I'm on now. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a part of God giving records. You know, we about to take over. I'm about to work on my album. At this point, I had already had an album that I had did with my boy D at his house um, as far as the studio and so I already had music but my music needed to be mixed and mastered needed to sound right <coughs> and all the stuff so the boss was like yo I like this song right here a lot I want you to redo it in my studio so it can sound crispy this is going to be your single I was like I'm with it let's do it so boom we redid one of my songs um, it's called What You Mean boy what you mean you ain't running with Christ Girl, what you mean? You need Jesus in your life? It was it was that song. And so we redid it. Sounded crispy, sounded good. And um he was like, the vision I, I'm assuming for him, he had a website. I remember this man, like he had a website <coughs> and it's not there no more. But it was like um, you know, it had his stuff on there when he had he did his album, his bio and all his stuff was on there or whatever. And then it was like coming soon as dub. Um, what was the name of my album at the time? I think it was Glory and Shame. Uh, it was like as dub coming soon or whatever. I was like, yeah, man, I'm on the website and everything. I'm feeling good. I had the t shirt representing for the record label, um, all this stuff, right? I'm feeling good. I never signed a contract, right? Um, I never asked about a contract. I wasn't quite sure I understood how was we going to make money and what portion of money would be mine. Like, none of this stuff got talked about or discussed. He never uh, tried to get me to get my music copyrighted or nothing during this time. So anyway, <laughs> he like, we need to record your album. So he was going to record at his house, of course. <clears throat> so we did the one song which you mean I redid it um, I did another song with him and my wife it's called uh, Thief, Thief of the Night which he did the beat and he was on the hook the boss was and I did those two songs with him as far as re recording and then that was it so throughout this whole time and space and all and all this that had happened up in 
and you know, life happens in between all the stuff I'm talking about in the story, but um, I had gained friendship with a brother from Richmond and with a couple other people. Um, and I started uh, going out with them a lot more, doing shows, taking them to shows. We were just kicking it a lot, me and this other group of uh, gospel rappers. And I was learning about them, you know, and we we more so closer in age. And we just clicked on a lot of levels. And he's, I still consider this dude a brother. Uh, he's like nine months older than me. And um, not just him, but his homeboy. Uh, salute to Manny Black. Uh, salute to D. Weezy, who's like the little brother of the crew. And um, we, we all just clicked. And then it was just like, okay, this is the Jesus Kid movement right here. You know what I'm saying? That's what that was. That was uh, old boy's thing. It was called the Jesus Kid movie. And so, I felt like, you know, at that time, like, the Jesus Kid movement was really winning as far as, like, I'm saying popularity. Music was dope. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was current. It was um, helping people get through a lot of things. Um, and it was just tight, like, for me watching it. So, at this point, this is back when MySpace was popping too. So on my MySpace, I remember I had um, my MySpace went through a few phases, y'all. I went from uh, having just being Savalas Williams to being uh, Savalas No Limit Records raised me to being um, S Dub God Given Records. And at this point, I was S Dub God Given Records on uh, MySpace. And so. Um, even though I'm God giving records, I'm kicking it with the Jesus Kid movement, but I'm not a part of the Jesus Kid movement at this point. We just chilling, we just homeboys. I'm actually helping them out, getting them, getting them the shows. Um, <coughs> and so, um, you know, me, me and the boss for God giving records, we had to, we still talking and communicating, but it's like it's a, it's a. Uh, it's a what not a wedge between us, but it's a distance between us as far as music and ministry. We would still see each other every now and then, but it was never really about, you know, hey, I need you to come record this song or are you available to record or what's happening? It's just like, oh, I see you hanging out with uh the Jesus Kid movement, or are you taking them this that and this that and the third? I'm like, yeah, but cause you we ain't doing nothing. But God giving records, like we ain't doing nothing. Like your album already out, you already good, you you Gucci. So one day I go on the website, God Given Records, and guess what? I'm no longer on the website. I'm like, okay. I never I never asked the man, like, yo, what's up with this? Why are you taking me off the site? It was just like he just took me off. <coughs> and so um I will say this to his defense. The boss's defense. He had a. This man has a large family, and he had other issues going on behind the scenes outside of ministry and music. Like he had real life stuff going on. You feel me? Like stuff that the church, you know, don't even understand or or can't really help with. You know what I'm saying? So I do know that about him, and so I will give him the benefit of the doubt on. I understand why he. Um, I'm gonna say stop. Um, trying to push me into music or affiliating me with the record label or even himself too because God Given Records kind of just went away. But it's sad because he could have been, he could have called me, he could have texted me and been like, yo, I got so much going on, you know, my personal life that I don't really got time to nurture an artist on a record label. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I would have accepted that. But long story short, man, um, you know, <coughs> I never got that common courtesy. I thought I was a part of something. Um, I thought I was on a record label, but when I look at it now, me being 31 years old and having my own record label and having my own publishing and doing things my own way and understanding how to create an LLC, how to create this, how to create that, how to push this, it's... Um, it's just, it was it's just very disappointing that um, I had to go through that in order to get to where I'm at now. So 
a lot of my music that I put out now under Glory and Shame Records, you will find that it's gospel music, even though I'm not a gospel rapper anymore, is because I still have all my songs. They're all original beats. You know what I'm saying? And so therefore, I'm putting them out under my own record label. As far as God giving records and that whole thing, man, it's like, like I said, I thought I was a part of something that was... Um, bigger than me and bigger than you know what I mean bigger than the, the boss but apparently it wasn't the case and I, I don't feel like um, <coughs> the boss really ever had time to really nurture an artist because he had so much other stuff going on in his personal life and um, that's just my experience of being a part of a record label when you're not really a part of nothing um, long story short as far as everything else, man, me and the Jesus Kid movement end up linking up. I stopped affiliating with uh, God Given Records as far as me representing it. And um, I started doing my thing with the uh, Jesus Kid movement. And that's a different video for a different time. But um, as far as being signed to a label and you thinking you signed to a label. But if you ain't never had a contract and signed the contract, agreeing to the terms of the contract... If you ain't never had your music uh, registered to, for copyrights, and if you ain't never did none of that, as far as music goes, then you're not on the label. You're not. You're not on the label. You don't have any rights to any uh, monetization for any music. And it's just like, basically, you are, you are really an artist. Meaning that, which I had to learn is that, like, artists don't get paid. Who gets paid is writers and publishing. But performers are artists. And artists don't get paid unless they have their own contract for performing the song of someone else. And that's a big thing to understand in the music industry. You know what I mean? So be more, if you if you already write music or you already freestyle or whatever, or you, or you record, make sure that you register your music and you're not just putting out music for somebody else to take steal or uh have control over and i mean hopefully this helps somebody um who's doing music to understand that yo it's important for me as an artist to really um be more than an artist to be a boss in the sense of ownership you know because if you don't own your music you don't own your rights or you don't have it registered then like, not that your music doesn't matter, but, you know, you never know which song may be the one. And it don't have to necessarily blow up, but at least you know, like, you you have the rights and the ownership of that material, you know. And so, um, none of that stuff was ever explained to me at God Giving Records. I don't even think, maybe, I don't know, I feel like he, he knew those things because he had an album in stores, like a legit album. And this stuff was copyrighted, I believe, like to 110%. So <clears throat> I'm just like, why not share that information with someone you're trying to put on your label? But everybody got their different reasons, man. And uh, hopefully this helps somebody, like I said, in the, who's getting in the music industry or, or who's already recording, doing music, to understand the importance of ownership of your material, of your work. And don't just take somebody's words and say, oh, yeah, you're on our team or or this is our record label. But they don't actually have a boss of a record label. How are you going to say that? Oh, we X, Y and Z records or X, Y and Z entertainment. But there's no person in charge completely. You know, then it's, it's not really a record label. You know what I mean? It's just you and your friends or you and your buddies or whatever. Just. Uh, making music that n not that nobody cares about but you're making music that is not legitimate in the music industry you know until you get legit in the music industry getting your music registered and published then like your music don't count you know what I'm saying literally it doesn't count like your streams don't count or none of that and so it's important to uh, recognize that for yourself or any inspiring artists out there or people who are doing music. Like I said, if you got old music, I feel like this for myself. I'm putting all my old music out. That's original music. 
if it got the original beat or I paid for the beat and it was exclusive, I'm dropping it on Glory and Shame Records. It's just that, you know? So, um, that was my experience once again. And uh, I hope y'all uh, learned something from that. Peace out. You I want to add this to the uh, video as well. That I did release an album called Gutter Music. I mean, not Gutter Music. I released an album called Gutter Gospel in December 2009. And um, some stuff I had recorded, Salute to LOA, um, stands, means the least of all. I recorded basically my whole album at LOA Studio, uh, Not By Sight Studio. And <coughs> when we first started recording, I was under the impression that I was still a part of God Given Records. So some of my music, you you will hear me represent God Given Records, especially in my intro. Um, <coughs> and when I did the album release party <coughs> at my church, which is not the same church I mentioned earlier, but I had switched churches. But anyway, that's a whole different story too. Um, when I did my album release party, I invited um, the boss to be there. And he did show up. And I believe he stayed for the whole thing or like a majority of it. And um, I gave him a copy of the uh, CD. I remember it was passed out to everybody for free. Um, I had like 20 tracks on it, 19 tracks on it, something like that. And I actually used... Um, one of the boss's songs from his album on my album the one he did with his cousin D uh, because I liked it so much but that album that I did Got a Gospel those songs were never copyrighted um, were never registered or nothing like that and so those are the songs that I'm re-releasing now under Glory and Shame Records which is my record label which I own and I have the rights to and so um, I just wanted to add that in there. So I, I do, I have no, I don't want people to uh, leave this video thinking that this dude did me wrong or dirty or whatever the case may be because um, I still have respect for this man. Um, it is what it is. And I understand about how life can get in the way of what you're trying to do or what you would desire to do. <coughs> and so um, I just definitely wanted to, uh, put that in there that he did show up to my album release party and um i don't remember talking to him there i just remember seeing him and him smiling and um i'm pretty sure he was proud that i was able to complete it and i'm pretty sure he knew it was going on because i was recording like i said at um walk by faith studios which was his homeboy and so um I just wanted to add that um, to it as well. But I haven't seen this man. And, and, and also, he hooked, he hooked me up with a job um, when I was unemployed for a while. He hooked me up with a job working with the Oakland A. So we worked together on that for a little bit. And so he's, I mean, he's not a bad dude. But I just feel like as far as the music stuff went, he had too much going on outside to really focus on the music. And he kind of didn't communicate um, as far as what he was doing with the record label. He just kind of left me out to dry. Um, so yeah, definitely want to add that into this video.